to the newly named Loose Threads Thursday. Um, it was really funny. My, uh, my now nine-year-old, my Evie, had a birthday yesterday. And um, she loves YouTube. And she loves watching art videos and loves watching people craft. And so she has become my biggest fan on YouTube. <laughs> she loves to watch the videos. And um, she was really excited about offering up some ideas on names for the Thursday live stream. And so together we came up with the idea of Loose Threads Thursday. Um, kind of with the idea of maybe, you know, doing some sewing and showing some things off that haven't been, um, maybe I haven't shown you a finished product or I don't know, whatever I'm working on, but not necessarily having to only talk about sewing and you know, kind of discussing other things that are going on. So for today, um, I'm going to be binding these Scrappy Stars placemats. Um, week before last, uh, you joined me and I made the top for one of these. And um, then last week, I was in kind of a dilemma and I couldn't decide which color to which fabric to use for the binding. And so I put it up as a, as a poll and I pulled it on um, the Facebook page and I pulled it on uh, Instagram and on my blog and my personal page. And um, so I'm going to reveal in just a minute what we're going to bind it with um, and kind of be exciting, you know. Uh, so I'm glad that these are done. This is actually one of my original patterns. It's the first one that I released. And um, it is in my craftsy shop. Um, and I'm sorry, you can probably hear my kids squealing. It has been very exciting around here with a birthday and we have grandma visiting. And um, sometimes we get a little too much, too many sweets and um, they wanna be a little bit out of control. <laughs> but anyway, so please disregard if you hear them squealing in the, in the other room. Uh, so anyway, so I'm going to put binding on these and just kind of go through my process and this will help me too because I'm putting together um, a beginning quilter series and this can help me practice for the whole binding section of teaching uh, binding. So, but before we do that, uh, a couple of cool things. Uh, did you see the iron? Because it's so shiny and fantastic and it's really not like a super crazy good iron or anything like that. Um, but it is new to me and I'm very excited because I've had the same iron, I think maybe since we've been married and that's been 11 years. I'm pretty sure I got that right after we got married. Um, so this is exciting to me. Um, and also <clears throat> tomorrow I am hosting the thank goodness it's finished Friday, the TGIFF link up on my blog. And, um, so if you're a sewer or a quilter or you do anything that you would like to link up to tomorrow, um, I am doing that. I'm hosting that and I host it twice a year. And so I, it's always really exciting because I get new people come in and I get to see, you know, all of the different um, people's things and get to connect. And I just love the quilting community anyway. Um, I don't know very many quilters in person. And so having that community online is kind of a big deal for me because I miss out a lot on that here. Um, so anyway, so this is what I'm featuring tomorrow. I know you guys have seen bits and pieces of this for last couple of weeks, but it is all finished. Look! <laughs> I love it. I, I love, love, love it. In fact, I love this so much that um, I picked up another jelly roll this week uh, that's in kind of a girlier colors, color scheme. It's um, pinks and um, pink and off-white and navy. Um, and here's the back. I don't know if you can see that. Let me bring it closer so you can see the pretty backing. Ooh. See all the circles? I love it. So anyway, so I'm planning on making kind of a girl version of this one. Although this one could be for anybody. 
doesn't, it's not necessarily that this one is for boys, but, um, anyway, I really like this, and I'm so excited to have it done, and to get to share it tomorrow, so I hope you'll check out, thank goodness it's finished Friday, tomorrow, and, um, you know, like I said, if you do anything, have any, uh, uh, crafts or if you blog or anything like that, I would love to see you come on and um, leave a link and, you know, kind of join in with the community. Um, I'm going to set that aside. Something else I'm working on, which is kind of cool, is I am doing a, um, I'm working on a pattern and it's a quilt that I designed I guess it was close to the beginning of the year. I can't remember if I made it right before this one or if I made it right after. Um, but I made a quilt top and I loved it, but I wanted to try to make the pattern uh, with graphics instead of pictures. And I just didn't do so good on the graphics part. So I'm making it again. And um, this time I'm taking pictures of the process. And these are some of the fabrics I'm using. For this one this is going to be a pattern for fabrics that you love it is um perfect for showcasing beautiful prints um, let me see if some of my other favorites in here this is a stack of just some of my favorite art gallery prints and i found a couple of bundles that um some store owners on etsy had put together that um, oh, I love this one. I love florals. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. I love florals, but look at that. Isn't it beautiful? It's kind of pixelated. Anyway, I found a couple of people who had put in some different, um, different pieces from different lines through Art Gallery Fabrics and had made a couple of different bundles and then I matched those together because I thought they'd be pretty and to come up with what I wanted for this quilt. Um, and look at the crosses. Isn't that pretty? Anyway, so this is what I'm working on the last couple of days. I can't really show you yet um, because, you know, it's just the way it has to be when I'm doing patterns. It's kind of got to stay a, a secret for a little while until it's ready. Um, but anyway, so this is exciting that's going on. And now um, let's do the place knots. Um, so... I pulled everywhere and the favorite binding was the turquoise. Yeah. So it went back and forth and it was really fun to see um, kind of which places voted for, for which because on my personal page there for a while the gray was winning and on my face on my business page the turquoise was winning, and among the quilters on my blog, the gray was winning. Um, but after all of it was said and done, the turquoise came ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare this for binding. Um, what I've done is I've measured my place mats, and I've done some math, and so I know that I need six two and a half inch strips of this turquoise fabric, and I'm going to go ahead and press out some section here um, because I've got a few wrinkles on it. Um, I have this ruler. Normally I use a, um, a six by 24 inch ruler. That's kind of my go-to. And um, what um, I'm gonna do for this since I'm doing multiple, multiple strips is I'm going to use a special ruler and the story behind it is kind of cute because when Rob and I got married, um, it's been over 11 years ago now, but he knew that I wanted to learn how to quilt. And um, so one year, or I think it was for our first anniversary, so this has been just over 10 years ago, he bought me this ruler. And I had no idea how to quilt. I only ever did anything by um, hand stitching and using scissors. I knew nothing about rotary cutting. I knew nothing. Um, I didn't even really, I didn't even have a working sewing machine. I didn't know anything about quarter inch seams or 
matching anything. I had no clue whatsoever what I was doing. So he bought this for me. And you can see it's had, it, I've, it's gotten some love. But um, this is a shape cut ruler by uh, June Taylor. Um, but what it does is it allows me to cut um, at increments all in one go. But I didn't have a rotary cutter or anything at the time. And I had no idea what to do with this. And so it wasn't for another two to three years before it ever actually saw any love and got to be used. Uh, but I still use it now, and even though it's got some breaks in it and it is all scratched up and everything, I still love it because my handsome husband gave it to me. And um, as long as it's working, I'm going to keep using it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on here and line up my fold at the bottom of my fabric with the lines on my ruler. And we can do close-ups on this when I do the actual... Um, tutorial on binding. You know, I, I will let you guys see closer things. Hi, I see you. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to cut across every two and a half inches. You see how quick this is? Oh, I think I need a new blade on my rotary cutter. Four, so I need two more. And don't forget, I can see if you guys leave comments or anything. So as you come up, come on, um, feel free to say hi or ask me questions about what's going on. And um, they don't even have to be quilty questions. We can talk about whatever. And um, that's the whole fun part about this is I got to get to hang out with you guys while I'm sewing. And even if you're watching on the replay, you can still comment um, as you go through the video on different aspects of the video, and I can still come in and get to talk with you and interact with you in the comment section, so that's kind of cool. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to turn the camera over here, and we're going to go over to the sewing machine, and I'm going to start putting these strips together to make one really long strip that I'm going to use to go around all of the uh, placemats, okay? So let's come over here. Like my iron so we can turn one day maybe I'll have a, a film crew and um, you know I'll have somebody with a camera who can follow me around and it'll all be really smooth transitions and everything um, so we'll put that in as a long-term goal but for now I get to move my own camera and my lamp and everything so we're gonna come over here and here's my lovely sewing machine that I love. And I'm going to turn it down here. Can you see that okay? And see me? Yep, that works. Okay, so the trick to doing this, um, we can, there are a couple of ways that you can attach, you can, you can uh, do binding like this. Hi, 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 I've got a visitor. Okay, I love you. I'll see you later. Please close the door. Bye. Bye. We can, you could do, attach the strips all like this, just edge to edge and do a seam and open it up. But what that's going to do is as it goes around the, um, uh, the placemat, it's going to leave lumps. So we don't want to have lumps. Uh, we want it to be kind of a, a smooth uh, transition and seam around the edges. So what we do is we put our fabrics right side together and we make kind of a T. You're going to put them perpendicular like this. And then I'm going to sew from this side over here diagonally to where they to where they meet. So the two points of crossing straight across like that. And now I've been doing this for a long time, so I don't mark it anymore, but you could. And if you're new to binding, if that's helpful to you, definitely do it. All you have to do is line them up 
grab a little ruler or something with a straight edge and just mark a line across there and it will um, give you a guide to sew along. So I'm going to do that here. Get them lined up. And so I have my little V up here. I, I know that, let's see here. So I've got my little V and I'm going to start sewing there and then I'm going to come straight down to the little V at the bottom. Okay. Now, I want to make sure that this doesn't twist on me, so I'm going to pull it out and I stick my thumb there because I want the right side of this one to be up, the print. So I do this so that it doesn't get twisted on me and I always make sure my fabric is facing the right direction. So I'm going to lay this up here and grab another strip and do the exact same thing. I'm going to make a T. I guess it's more of an X at this angle. Yeah. And I'm going to keep going until they are all done. So that was my Amelia who came in um, hi Evie, I see you. <laughs> um, she, uh, Amelia is four and, um, she is feral, if you know what I mean. Um, we often say that she is free in her freeness. She knows that she is a free human being and she, um, lives it well and so lately uh we often um if there is quiet you know we'll become suspicious and um we'll say <clears throat> you'll hear someone in the house say where's amelia and then a short period later you'll hear the same person say where are your pants because we are in a phase. <laughs> um, she is, so, but she is so fun. I don't want to make it sound like she's like super wild or, you know, trouble because she's not, she's, she's fantastic, but we are definitely in a phase and it has been really funny because that has just been the phrase of the last two weeks, I think. So I've got the strips put together. Now what I'm going to do is I have the seam here and they're all hooked together. See, they're kind of in a chain like this. So I'm going to cut off the excess, um, the excess fabric here and clip them apart. So I clip straight up and I guesstimate or guesstimate a quarter inch. Um, if you want to be super accurate, uh, or if that scares you, you can um, measure it out and you can cut it with your rotary cutter. Um, that is perfectly okay, but I like, I, I have to be really efficient with my time and I have to be able to get things done really quickly um, because, you know, I have little ones who are here and need mommy. So the time that I get in here is pretty precious and I have to be intentional with it. So anyway, so this is one of those ways that I cut time is I don't necessarily measure, I just eyeball it. Um, so let's cut this. And some more. Okay, 
Now we're going to go back over to the iron and I'm going to press these. Um, the pressing for this is here, let me, <laughs> uh, um, we're going to press the seams open, but we're also let's bring this over so you can see. Um, I'm going to press them in half, the one long strip. in half is because the whole point of the binding is to hide the raw edges of the quilt and um, so we're going to we're going to fold it in half find the end here um, and then we're going to press it in half like this and then as that goes on the edge we will fold that over the edge of the quilt and it'll hide everything. What does it say? Uh, okay. I love you too. Um, so anyway, so here I'm going to press this, okay? And I lay it out. When I get to the seams, I press the seams open to kind of reduce that bulk. There we go. And then I just fold in half and I press right along that seam. Just like this. So I've got them hooked together, and so when I pulled on my iron, it pulled the camera too. So let's just bring this over here. Sorry. <laughs> Still getting used to all of this, remember? Uh, I'm so glad I can practice on you all. And, um, you know, instead of the entire world. Okay, got another seam to press. I know that this isn't super interesting this portion of it um uh, but this is just all part of it this is how my day runs you know um i enjoy every step of the quilting process uh, from picking out the design or designing myself and doing the math to get all the pieces figured out, to cutting the pieces and uh, piecing the top together and quilting and basting. And now basting is probably my least favorite, but it's not like I don't like not enjoy basting. See, I've got this nice thin strip coming along. There are some quilters, um, some ladies who prefer, or, I mean men too, uh, I've only seen ladies say it though, that um, prefer to do their binding at two and a quarter inches. And I have done two and a quarter inches um, to try it. And I really preferred the wider, the wider binding. Um, I just like having the little extra room with it. And you know, that may change at some point, but at this time, I still, uh, I still prefer two and a half inches. Last 
last section. Okay, we are all done. Turn my iron off. Now comes the fun part. We get to add it to the beautiful placemats. Uh, so let's come over here. Let me unplug the iron again. So I don't yank the camera off. And I'm going to bring you over here. Let's see. Let me get you at a good angle. Um, I kind of went back and forth on how I was going to do this. There are a couple of different ways to do binding on a project. Uh, for one, you can um, you can do it all by machine and quilt both sides or sew both sides with the machine. Um, oh, I hear a kid. Um, you can do one side with a or do both sides with the machine, sewing it on either the back, you can sew it on the back, bring it around to the front and stitch it on with the machine. Um, and I often do that with placemats uh, because they're smaller projects. Uh, however, with this one, I'm actually going to sew it to the top and I'm gonna treat these like I treat my big quilts and I'm gonna hand stitch them onto the back. Now I'm not gonna do the video of me hand stitching <laughs> but I am going to go ahead and do um, the machine part of putting these on the top so you can see how that works. Let me see. I am I need a pen. Let's see. There we go. I just finished the hand binding on the quilt, the crossing paths quilt, and so my um, I hand stitched that binding down, and so my pens are in the living room still because I like to uh, uh, I like to hand stitch while I'm watching TV or playing like a computer game or something. Uh, I'm going to change the foot on my machine to a walking foot. And a walking foot, uh, you know, you have these little what are called feed dogs on the machine that pull the fabric through. And a walking foot has the same kind of feed dogs on top. And so as the needle moves, it pulls this up and down and it pulls the fabric from the top at the same time. So you get uh, even movement from the top and the bottom so that the fabric goes through uh, evenly. So that's what I use for binding. Oh. Okay. So I'm gonna line this up. Okay, so I stop about a quarter of an inch from the corner. Can you see this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this fabric over at a 90 degree angle so I get a nice pretty triangle there here, and then I'm going to fold it back on itself, going back down the other way, like this. So then the fabric comes down the other side. And what that does is it gives a real pretty uh, mitered corner. Another corner. So I'm going to do the same thing. Pull it back. 
then fold it over to go down the other side. Evie, I'm putting the binding on the actual placemats now. <laughs> Can you see? Did you see how I did the corner? Evie has been wanting, she likes to have um, a glass of water on her bed, on her bedside table. And so we've been talking about making uh, a special placemat or a coaster or something to put there. And I think that she should make it. And I'd like to bring her in and um, let her pick out maybe a charm pack or something of five inch squares and let her uh, pick out the design and how to put them together and then teach her how to use the machine. Um, she's been hand stitching a little bit and she's done a little bit of applique with a quilt, a little, uh, it's like a fleece tie quilt that she got for Christmas. And so um, it would be fun to bring her in here and teach her how to use the machine and let her make one. Because she's pretty incredible. She, she's, uh, she is quite an artist. Okay. When I start sewing on the corners too, I don't start from the very top. I kind of eye about where the fold is. I can kind of see where that is at about a quarter of an inch. And that's where I start sewing. Backstitch there. So I don't want to go all the way down. I want to leave some inches here where there's where they're not sewn, where my pin is. And um, this last piece, because I want to hook these two pieces of fabric together. So what I'm going to do here is... Um, there's a little math that's involved, and it is, um, we want the fabric to overlap uh, the amount that is, um, however wide the fabric strip is, so ours was two and a half inches, two and a half inches, minus one quarter of an inch. So we want them to overlap two and a quarter inches, or if you're doing two and a quarter inch with binding you do it at two inches so I'm gonna take off the selvage here on this piece and I want that in the calculations and I'm gonna lay this over and I'm gonna measure actually let me do it this way here so it'll go one two and a quarter and measure that up to the bottom part there and I'm going to mark that. And then I'm going to cut it. And then when we put them together, we do it just like we did when we made the big long strip. We're going to make the T, open them both back up like this. And we're going to put them right sides together and make that T, except instead of this, we don't have selvage on these, so I'm not gonna overlap them. I'm just going to put them, line them up together. And if you need to, pin it. Do not be afraid to pin. Um, I do save time by not pinning a lot, but I am gonna pin this. And you know what? If you wanted to just do like a quarter of an inch and have that one little hump, <laughs> Um, instead of doing the T and you wanted to line them up and just have them overhang, you know, just a little bit, that's totally okay. I mean, no one's going to notice that, um, have, that it has one lump. It, it's not a big deal. So, I mean, if you're more comfortable doing it that way, just do it that way. It's all about what works for you. And um, the ways that I do things 
just happen to be the ways that I do things. I have, I never had a teacher in any of this. And so I've learned all myself through trial and error and watching YouTube videos. So, um, I've just kind of figured what works for me. So my ways are definitely not the best way. <laughs> I mean, they might be, but I mean, I'm, I can't claim that, but they are just the way that I do it. So if you do it a different way, or if you find a way to take what I do and make it work for you in a different way, that's fantastic. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to start up here at this top corner and I'm going to sew diagonally across to the other corner. So I have a nice diagonal line that goes, um, to connect these last two pieces. The pins do really help to keep everything nice and lined up. Okay, now I'm going to um, cut off the extra fabric here, kind of iron and guessing about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to set that to the side and then I'm going to open, hey Patty! <laughs> um, I'm going to open these up and I'm just going to finger press here to press that open and then I'm going to fold it back over and I'm going to start here and I'm going to sew it down um, to where this the seams overlap, okay? And I'm going to do a little back stitch at the beginning, and I'll do a little back stitch at the end. Patty, do you do um, do you use two and a half inches on your binding, or do you use two and a quarter? show you a secret here because I know I know hey Lenny it's good to see you um I know that a lot of people I mean who especially people who don't sew I mean other quilters I would I really don't want you guys looking really close at my stuff but um you know you'll think that stuff is perfect that what we make is perfect and it really isn't so here's a little here's a little secret that you guys have on me now um when um Whenever I finish my binding, I almost always have a little teeny tiny fold on the inside. Do you see? I almost always get that little bitty tiny fold. And I have tried and tried and tried to get that to go away. But look here. It doesn't show on the other side. So if you get something like that, even if it folds, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. You know? It went right on the inside. Nobody's going to know from the outside. And probably even if it was on the outside, no one's going to notice. Exactly, Patty. Better done than perfect. <laughs> um, so, I mean, like, nobody's nobody's going to notice. You're, you're the only one who's going to see your mistakes. Nobody else cares. <laughs> Great. Um, so, I'm not going to, I'm not going to actually hand stitch these on, but I do want to show you one last thing that I do to get real pretty corners um, on the binding is I'm gonna trim off the excess on the corners. So I don't wanna cut into the seam, but I just wanna take the tips of all the corners off. So I do that and I try to take the, ex the extra threads from starting and stopping there. Um, I try to trim those two with that cut, just like that. There we go. So now when I fold these over, do you see the pretty nice, I don't know if you can see that close. Um, it gives a nice mitered corner. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, I had a, uh, this lovely little woman who um, had been quilt, who has quilted for 50 or 60 years. I think she's 90 now. But she told me uh, one day that she was very proud of me that I mitered my corners because <laughs> that was a big deal to her. She'd never made a quilt on a machine even. She only hand stitched and only hand quilted. And um, um, her quilts were absolutely beautiful, but 
It was it was important to her that I mired my corners, and so I always try to keep her happy, and I think about her with those corners. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go down, and I'm going to fold that over the edge so it hides that raw edge. So now these will be able to be washed and dried. And um, to do that, I put a pin in. I stick a pin in and on the corners I pull it up nice and straight and then I just fold that corner over so that it goes across the other way and then it's nice and mitered in the back too I don't know if you can see that um, whenever I'm able to, to hire that person to follow me around with the camera that can move it and zoom in on things for me uh, we'll get nice, pretty um, thing uh, close-ups of those. Um, no, not on this time. Sometimes I do patty. I'll use the machine to do. If I'm really in a hurry, um, I will do a machine. And I thought about doing that for these, but I don't. Um, I don't know. With the thread colors that I have available, I was thinking that I didn't want. Uh, turquoise the thread if I got off any you know you kind of have to be really careful on the the machine sewing uh, or it will look a, it, it can look a little messy and I didn't want to take that on here with the thread colors that I have so because this is a contrast I'm going to hand stitch it down um, I don't know what you mean, Betty. Yeah, it is really, it is, um, it's cathartic to sit and hand stitch. I always think of my grandmas and um, sitting with lap work. I had one grandma who quilted and uh, my great grandma quilted as well. And I actually have some of their quilt tops. Maybe I should show those next week. Um, I'd have to get them out, but that would be, they're so neat. And one day I think that I might be good enough to actually finish them. No, <laughs> um, oh. I'm having technical difficulties. Okay. Um, but anyway, my, I mean, my other grandma would crochet. And so I always loved, I, I just have this picture of them sitting in their chairs with their lap work and I'm someone, um, get my chair to go back up. Uh, I don't like having, not having something to do with my hands. <laughs> I don't know, are you guys like that too? Yeah, I'll bring, I'll, I'll get them out. I have them in here. Um, I just have them, them stored away. They're really neat. They're really neat. Um, and I have some blocks that were embroidered by my grandma who crocheted too, that she never finished her quilt. Um, so I really needed to do something with that. But anyway, I'm not going to make you watch me do um, all four, so I'm going to call it a day. Uh, but thank you all for joining me, and um, I'm going to uh, upload this onto YouTube too, and <laughs> I bet we are. We have an awful lot in common. <laughs> um, but I'm going to upload this on YouTube, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. It really does help me with the um, YouTube algorithms to get out there. Um, to other people who I haven't met yet. So I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.